Over the last week, I've been slowly acquiring individual PC parts in order to make a really good budget system. And this was the last deal that I got in my hands right here. This is a Ryzen 3 2200G, four cores, four threads, and I managed to pick this up for 80 Australian dollars. However, you're probably wondering why you're outside surrounded by nature. Well, I mean, I love being surrounded by nature, but there is another reason, and that is we are out on the road and I'm going to pick up the final two components that I need to complete this budget gaming PC setup. And that is an A520 motherboard. And now this motherboard was being advertised for 60 Aussie dollars. I put in an offer of 50 and they accepted. So we're gonna go pick that up right now. And I've also found a case for sale with a bit of RGB bling for 50 Aussie dollars too. So let's go get these two final deals and then talk about the other components in this build and put together a budget gaming rig. If you wanna get yourself a cheap, legit Windows 10 Pro Key license, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as $14. When you use that coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows activated right now. Link in the description below. Studio and it's time to finally put this Ryzen 2200G budget gaming system together. And I'll put all the prices of everything here up on the screen that we've got in today's build and also the total tally for you guys. And with that aside, let's quickly build up our machine and see what it looks like. And not only that, let's see how it performs. So we've now finished the AMD 2200G APU build and it also looks pretty fresh. But before we get into the games, there is something important to do in the BIOS. Well, there's actually two things that are important in my opinion. The first being giving our APU a more dedicated video memory. And in this case, we're gonna give it the maximum and that's two gigabytes. So out of the 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, we're gonna allocate two gigabytes of that dedicated to the APU. Now, in my opinion, if I've only got eight gigabytes of system memory, I'll leave this on auto, but since we've got 16, we do have a bit of wiggle room, but it's also important to note that APUs don't have a dedicated VRAM buffer like graphics cards do. They actually use the uh, system DDR4 memory. So we are going to set that in. And then the other important thing is to lock in our XMP profiles. Now we've got two profiles with this kit of memory, one being a 3000 megahertz profile, that's profile two and the second being profile one, which is our 3200 megahertz. Now, since this is a 2200G, it may not boot with the 3200 megahertz profile, so we may have to lock in profile two if that doesn't work, but let's give that a go now and see if we boot into Windows. So 
So this little APU build is now configured and tuned and we managed to get the memory up to 3200 megahertz at CL16, which this is good value memory if you're in the market for a cheap kit that's still gonna give you good performance. Now, looking at the frame rates in GTA 5 here, this is a 1080p native resolution and we're getting around 55 to 70 FPS average here. And that's where it's fluctuating between depending on the area of the map. So completely smooth experience if you wanna couple this with a budget 60 Hertz monitor. Now, we recently took a look at these monitors uh, that I picked up on the channel and they're fine for gaming, especially with what's going on in terms of graphics cards. Now you're probably thinking, Brian, the APU build, it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. It's not gonna run games that well. And in my opinion, it will do the job, especially since there's gonna be a couple of tips I'm gonna give you guys in this video right now. And that is, I think graphics card prices will come down in the next couple of months. And the reason being is we're already seeing the Ethereum profitability start to, believe it or not, start to drop. That's the people who are buying the graphics cards and they're purchasing them just to mine cryptocurrencies. That profitability is going down, which means as that gets down, the demand for graphics cards from those uh, types of people who are buying them goes down as well. And another thing on top of that is there's also been uh, major changes and major releases coming out in the way of ASIC miners for Ethereum. So these two factors together will mean that we could, and coupled with a third factor, which if we see the all-time price highs of these cryptocurrencies crash, this could make graphics cards a lot cheaper very soon. And so my advice for now would be just to hold out and something like this APU build here, or even a budget build with an older graphics card under four gigabytes of VRAM, which we've also featured recently on the channel, something like these builds will get you by so we just finished up playing StarCraft 2 and we got a 3 vs 3 happening here where the average FPS started out really high, like over 120. And then as the game progressed and we got into really big battles because in 3 vs 3, there's a lot of units. It then uh, started averaging out at around uh, 53 average FPS with the 1% point percent lows being absolutely fine considering it is RTS. Now a really good thing about the APU build is that we've got upgrade options. And by this, I mean, we can change out our 2200G later on for say a Ryzen 5 3600. And we could also add in a graphics card. And this will give us a huge boost in FPS. And we really only have to change out one part and then add in another part and we're good to go. So the last game we had up here was Valorant and playing this at 1080p low settings, 100% screen res gave us 105 average FPS with 65 FPS on the 1% low and then 47 on the 0.1% low. So very smooth experience for Valorant. Now, some other things that I haven't talked about with this build is that it's whisper quiet and it only uses about 80 watts from the wall. So it's extremely power efficient and it's got the bling and it's really quiet to boot. The another good thing about only using 80 watts is that the CPU itself, the temperatures here, we're only really going up into the mid 50s, staying under 60 degrees in pretty much all these games that we're playing here today. So temperatures are cool, it's quiet, and it's very power efficient, and you can still get a very enjoyable experience at 1080p. And here it is for this gaming PC right here, 250 bucks, and we can play some games and enjoy ourselves whilst doing it, and we've got the option to upgrade when prices get a little bit better. Now, whether prices get better in one way or the other remains to be seen, but I do think graphics cards themselves will become more affordable in the next few months. So do wait for that if you are keen to get a graphics card. But one thing I'll talk about, even though this video has shown the APU is or can be a really good value option right now, there is one disadvantage I did find whilst I was testing this uh, PC, and that was mainly when it came to uh, using the screen grab uh, where they AMD don't include it in the driver's seat. That's the AMD Radeon Relive, but I did use Streamlabs and I tried to uh, start recording some gameplay footage while I was playing, and it does stutter. So if you do wanna stream or record desktop footage off this PC or off an APU build, then you may come into some trouble, especially since it does use that DDR4 memory for the whole system process. 
So basically, if you're just into gaming right now, this PC is going to serve you well, but you can upgrade it quite easy if you've got a bit of extra money and prices aren't too expensive in the future. But lastly, when it comes to building a PC like this, for me, it's a lot of fun, especially finding those used deals, where I think one of the best deals here today was definitely that APU. It's a 2200G, it costs a 62 USD or 80 Australian dollars, which when you think about it, you're getting four cores, four threads, and a GPU built on, even though it's like a low end GPU, it still represents awesome value for money but we did add in a new part and that was the ssd because i couldn't find any of those the case and the ram they were pretty much brand new even with this case right here i had the peel still on it when i got it so one thing to always keep in mind if you're watching tech yes city i'm always going to tell you guys to go out there and look for the best deals possible and they usually are local deals if you can get them and if your local area sucks then i have in the past as well built some aliexpress pcs where some of the parts on aliexpress right now are also still pretty cheap except of course the graphics cards anyway guys if you've got any questions or comments about today's build then do drop a comment in the comment section below and also let us know what you think of the apu build right here would there be things that you would do differently love reading those thoughts and opinions as always just like this question of the day here, which comes from QTP13. And they ask, as someone who has played arcade games, NES, Genesis, etc., sure, competitive edge, refresh rate, latency, resolution, I scoff at these words. So they're talking about our recent video that we did with the input latency testing, where I've talked about the technologies that, I mean, companies like NVIDIA, they use like Reflex and all this stuff that they talk about uh, getting a competitive edge when it comes to gaming. And there is truth to it. Of course, the companies like AMD and Nvidia, like they're going to really market this stuff hard so they can get a sale, but there is truth to it. And, and the way I think of it is if you're a pro gamer, you do want the best tools when it comes to uh, pro gaming, because that could cost you the difference between first and second. And sure, the gear is expensive, but if that difference is, or say for instance, the prize money, if that's a huge difference between first and second, that's already paid for the gear and then some. And another thing is too, if we compare it to any other sport, having the best gear if you're a pro player is always the most desirable route. I mean, I couldn't imagine Lewis Hamilton driving, say for instance, the Alpha Tori and coming first all the time. I mean, Lewis Hamilton's one of the best drivers out there, but he's also got the best gear to keep winning the races with Mercedes. So. Kind of like if you are the pro, then you will get the best gear. But going up to that route, of course, you still need the skill. So when I talk about things like getting a competitive edge, I understand that pro gamers want the best gear if they want to get the competitive edge. And that means having low latency and all of those things that you might scoff at. But I mean, ultimately, there is truth to it. Anyway, hope that answers that question. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh.